What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Today, we're going to be getting ready together using some of my current luxury favorites for my everyday routine. These are my multitasking saviors. These are the products that I am wearing day in and day out, on the reg, on camera, off camera, whenever I want to look cute and get ready for the day. I did do a similar video a couple months ago, and you guys really liked it, but I kind of shop my stash regularly, and I usually change up these products seasonally. So I thought it would be fun to make this a series here on my channel. So now that we're going from winter kind of into the spring season, if you guys want to hang out with me today and hear all of my current everyday favorites, then keep watching. But before we get into the makeup, friends, I do just want to quickly show you what I have on my ears today. A lot of you guys have been asking about these earrings. If you have watched any of my videos over the past couple of weeks, you would have seen these earrings because I haven't taken them off. I shower in them, I sleep in them, I work out in them. These have been my everyday, and these guys are from a brand called Ideal. I have been wanting to try this brand for the longest time, so you would imagine I was very excited when they reached out to me and allowed me to test these out so I can review them for you all. So thank you so much, Ideal, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now, friends, if you have not heard of Ideal before, everything that they make is fine jewelry. So we're talking 14 k carrot solid gold and real sustainable lab grown diamonds. Everything is real. Everything is handcrafted in Belgium, ethically sourced and produced. The packaging is beautiful. Everything about it is a real luxury experience. And other than the fact that their pieces are really good quality and obviously beautiful to wear, what I also really like about the ideal designs is that they are all modular, whether it be the earrings, the necklaces, the bracelets, they're all modular so that you can mix and match. You guys know I'm an earring girl, so I'm going to kind of show you what I mean with a couple of the styles from their site. So the way that it works with the earrings is that you start off with a simple pair of beautiful diamond studs. I'm wearing the medium size here for reference. They also have a petite, which is a little bit smaller, and a larger one, which is a little bit bigger, but I really like the mid-size one. You start off with the simple pair of diamond studs, but that is not where it ends, guys, because basically what you can do is that you can kind of build your collection with different add-ons. So they have different dangly pieces, crawlers, ear jackets, so that you can kind of change up the look of the studs and create your own earring. And depending on how you style it, you could get a two-in-one, a three-in-one, a four-in-one. So I'll show you guys these styles that I picked out. This design is called the Lucia, and I just love the way that the little tiny delicate diamonds they kind of like hug and caress the earlobe it's a little bit unexpected but i think still really like every day very understated very classy i love the way that the earrings just crawl up the ear and then you guys will see the ones that i'm wearing today these are called the audrey okay did you think that the greek girl wasn't going to get the evil eye style as soon as i saw these i was like okay done throw it in the bag those are the ones that i need so these are the ones that i've been wearing the most i feel like these are a little bit more casual casual, kind of like cool girl. I love these. I've been wearing them nonstop. And obviously you can see that the pupil of the little eye design, that is the stud. So I can pop that off at any time if I wanted to switch to something maybe like a little bit, you know, more simple. And then lastly, a lot of you guys know I only have one ear piercing. So another great way for me to have more fun with my earrings other than the ear jacket style is with an ear cuff. So I also picked out the spark ear cuff. I just like that this adds, I don't know, a little bit more intrigue, a little more more fun, a little bit more bling to the ear. You can wear this alone with the stud or you could do what I did and you can get kind of like a three in one by pairing it with another one of like the layered modular styles. So I like to wear it alongside the Audrey. I also love the beautiful little delicate chain that this comes with. You basically can move the ear cuff up and down the perimeter of your ear. You can kind of adjust it and really like make the style your own. All in all friends, honestly, I've really enjoyed testing out these earrings over the past couple of weeks. They're beautiful. They're good quality. They go with all of my outfits, all of my makeup looks. I haven't taken them off, okay? They're a part of my everyday look, and that is why I'm sharing them with you in this video. I also wanted to mention, friends, that Ideal kindly gave me a coupon code to share with you all. You can use the code Sophia Sees Beauty 10 to save 10% off site-wide. All of the beautiful jewels, 10% off for my subscribers. Thank you, thank you so much to Ideal for allowing me to test these out and review them for you all today and for partnering with me on this portion of the video. And with that, friends, let's get into this makeup look. All right, baby, let's get the headband on so we can get this makeup on my 
face. And I'm gonna kick things off with an amazing new product from Dior, guys. I love the new Forever Glow Star Filter. This is in the shade, what do I have? One. And I did review this for you guys the other day. I did a lot of luxury comparisons. So if you're kind of curious how this maybe compares to like the Chanel and the RMS and the Arc Glow Less, definitely check out that review. I can link it down below. But just in summary, what I really like about this is that it is pigmented enough that it gives you this gorgeous glow. And it's also very, very moisturizing. Not so much that it's going to turn you into a grease ball, but enough that it just adds such a nice juiciness to the skin. I've been using this and my RMS Supernatural Radiant Serum pretty much every single day. Those have been my two go-tos, but this is new, okay? So this is like my current obsession. This and the foundation I'm about to show you guys, they're not travel friendly, but at least for every day, just kind of like all my makeup vanity, this is amazing. I think some of you are gonna be surprised by my foundation favorite because when I reviewed this foundation, I told you guys I liked it, but it wasn't my favorite Chanel foundation. But you know what? I have a newfound love for this one because my skin has been a little bit dry, kind of, you know, with the change of the seasons. And this one has been just so good. It is the Chanel Sublimage. Is it Sublimage? Le tint, okay? The one that comes in the jar, the one that is so expensive, guys, I know, but it is a really nice foundation. And I know for a lot of you out there, specifically those of you who have dry skin or maybe mature dry skin, you've told me that this is your absolute holy grail. There's a lot of skincare in this. And I kind of turned to this because like I said, my skin was sort of weird and dry and like breaking out and that kind of stuff. And I feel like this has been really, really good. As I mentioned, before. I don't take this traveling with me. When I was traveling home and when I went to Houston last weekend, I was using my Pat McGrath foundation because that one is very long wearing. I feel like when I am on a plane and just, you know, car rides and like you have makeup on your face all day, that stuff just lasts. Okay. So I've been using the Pat McGrath a lot lately as well. And also the Dior Forever Skin Glow because it goes really well with the Dior primer. But in general, I would say Chanel Sublimage. Okay. It's, it's been hitting lately. All right. I think that when I first reviewed this, it was still kind of summertime. I want to say it was in September or something that I reviewed this and I just felt it was too glowy too like it made me look a little bit greasy, but now that it is a bit drier outside and not as hot, I feel like this is just, it, it's the perfect note on my skin. Is it worth it? I mean, I think if you have very dry skin, I do think it's worth it because this is one of the most moisturizing foundations I have ever, ever tried. By the way, all the products that I'm mentioning in this video, they are gonna be linked in the description box down below. I'll list the shade names there for you guys. Also, I do use affiliate links, so if you shop through them, Thank you so much for supporting my channel. Now let's move on to concealer. I have still been using quite frequently the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Concealer, at least under the eyes, because it's just so nice and brightening. Maybe not so much for breakouts. I'll show you guys what I've been using for that instead. But for the eyes, it's just nice. It's brightening. It is moisturizing. I'm using the BK Beauty 109 and just blending that in. I think I mentioned earlier that I've been breaking out a little bit lately. So to cover up any spots or, you know, other redness on my face, I've been using the Clay de Peau Stick Concealer. This is great because it's a little bit more matte. Like it kind of clings and grips a little bit more, a little bit more full coverage, if you guys know what I mean. And I do like the original, the one that comes in the click pen, but that one, I like it more for touch-ups. Like I'm a little bit impatient when it comes to the click pen and trying to get enough product out. So that one actually is pretty much always in my handbag. I use that to kind of touch things up. They're both good, but the stick concealer is the one that I'll usually use more so to like get ready in the morning. And I'm gonna blend that in with a BK Beauty A506. I believe BK Beauty just restocked all their brushes, maybe all of them except the Nikki collab ones, but those are gonna be restocked soon, guys. So make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you are following me on Instagram because I will let you guys know when those come back because I got some brushes that I need to stock up on, but I'm pretty sure you can get this brush and basically all of their other like sets and singles 
singles, they've all been restocked. I don't think any of you will be surprised to hear that for bronzer, I've mostly been using these new ones from YSL, specifically shade number one. That's the one that works for me well right now. I bet in a couple months, zero two will probably be best, but I've really been enjoying these. I was excited when these launched. Sometimes I wish they had a little bit more glow to them, but that's okay. It's a really nice natural bronzer. And I also feel like this formula, it does a good job of kind of setting that Chanel foundation, which is very moisturizing. It's not the dewiest, but you will get a little bit of shine, especially throughout the day if some of your natural oils come through. So I feel like this does a good job of just kind of like keeping it in place, but it also adds a nice little tan. Also, I think I mentioned this in my review of this product, but a good alternative to these, if you can't find a good shade or maybe you just don't wanna pay as much for them, is the NARS bronzers, the talc-free Laguna bronzers. Those are really good and the formula is pretty similar. I really like the lightest shade in that one, probably the two lightest shades, and you can get those in the upcoming Sephora sale. So that's a really good bronzer recommendation. I hope that these come to the Sephora sale, but I haven't seen them launch at Sephora yet, guys. I'm crossing my fingers. I have no insider information. Like I don't know what's going to be available in this sale, but I really do hope that they get these in stock in time. So some of you guys can maybe save a little bit of money off of them. Next, I'm going to do a little bit of contour and I showed you guys this product in my last get ready with me, but I'm going to use it here again because well, this is what I've been using on the daily. This is one of the new Glossier Cloud Paint bronzers. I have three of the shades. I'll link that other get ready with me down below in case you guys want to see swatches of those. But this is the one that I like to use for contour. This color is called Sweat. And I like to use this one because it is more cool toned. So if you like kind of like a nice natural cream contour or you just like a cooler bronzer, if you do more like that bronzer sculpted type of look, this is going to be a a really good one for you to use. I also still really like the Westman Atelier face trace stick. That one is really good, but we're gonna go in with the Westman Atelier product in just a second. So I thought we would mix it up, but I pretty much just kind of bop back and forth between these two products. It looks like a lot when you first put it on, but it's called the cloud paint guys. So it blends out just like a cloud. It's very, very natural and see how it adds that kind of like really nice sculpted look. It's a very different tone as well from the YSL bronzer, which is quite warm. So you get kind of that more natural looking bronze, but then you also get the chisel of the cool tone contour in the cheekbones. And I'm using the BK Beauty 101 brush. This is supposed to be like a foundation brush, but I'll be honest with you guys, I use it more for contour, cream blush, cream bronzer because it's angled and I just, I don't know, I just feel like it's perfect for that. Speaking of cream blush, here's the one that we're gonna be using today. This is from Westman Atelier. This is brand new to me or I've had it for maybe about two weeks now. I haven't shown it to you guys here on my channel. I purchased this when I ordered the Westman Atelier lipsticks that I reviewed for you guys, which I famously did not like, okay? I returned them, I just really, I didn't care for them, okay? guys, what can I say? But I got this blush and I really, really like it. It was a little bit of an impulse buy. This is the swatch right here, guys. It is a very boring, but very beautiful, perfect peachy nude. Once again, it is called Mimi. And this is what we're going to be using today. Westman Atelier has the best contour sticks, blush sticks, even the highlighting stick. I don't wear it all the time, but it is really nice. This is just the perfect let me get a little bit more on my brush. The perfect everyday cream blush. It's gorgeous. What can I say? Did I need this? No. Okay. But a lot of you guys, you mentioned these in the comments or you ask me like, oh, how does this compare up against the Westman Atelier? So I thought I would give one of these blushes a try because the only one that I have is one of the ones that come in like the mini set, the one that's called Doo Doo and that one's really, really nice as well. And I put that in my travel makeup kit, but I kind of felt like I needed something that was gonna be a little bit more neutral. So just, mm, look at that. They're so good and they're not too dewy. So they don't mess up the foundation that you already applied, all the makeup that we already have. 
on this face right here. Next up, friends, we have highlighter, and I've been bopping in between two very, very similar products. One of them is new that I've reviewed for you, and then the other one is a product that is not new that I had never tried before that you all influenced me to get, and I'm actually gonna do a quick little comparison for you guys today. So the first one that I've been using is, surprise, surprise, the new Dior Forever Glow Maximizers. I really, really like the bronze shade. The rosy and the pink ones I use as well, but I definitely have been using this one the most. And then the one that I'm going to be using today is this right here, guys. Okay. I finally picked up the Lisa Eldridge Elevated Glow. I have two shades here. I have Celestial Fire and I also got Cosmic Rose. So these are the ones that I'm going to be using today. Let me quickly explain the differences between these products because I didn't have the Lisa Eldridge when I did the review. And I had so many comments of people asking me, like, what is the difference between between them. So I'm gonna attempt to do that right now. The Dior have more pigment, they are creamier, they are more moisturizing, they give more shimmer and glow to the face, they give more of like a plump moisturized look to the face and when you touch it, it kind of feels like how your skin feels after you moisturize it and your moisturizer kind of sinks in. The Lisa Eldridge ones are very interesting. I don't know like what kind of witchcraft goes into this, okay, but these feel like skin. They don't feel like moisturized skin. They feel incredibly natural. They are a thinner formula. They are not as shimmery and pigmented as the Dior. These look like more of a lit within type of look. These look like you're trying to trick people, like you aren't wearing makeup, and they actually feel when they dry down like skin. Like, do you see how that is just exactly what the name says? elevated glow. So that's the difference between them. There isn't one that I like, you know, better than the other, but I would say that I go to the Dior when I'm looking for something that's almost like a blush. It's, you know, trying to add more pigment and glow to my face. Whereas the Lisa Eldridge to me are kind of like that perfect subtle highlighter. And I would probably go for the one that best suits your skin tone. Whereas with the Dior, I feel like I can pick any of the shades and use them in different ways. So hopefully that's helpful, guys. I'm going to be using this one cosmic rose you don't really need a lot this is such a nice special product like i don't have another liquid highlighter like this in my collection so if you're looking for a good one i would definitely recommend checking these out going back in with the bk beauty 109 see so good right if you like something natural i just think it's beautiful. So if you're my skin tone, Cosmic Rose, I think this is a really nice match. I'm just gonna quickly do my brows with the Victoria Beckham Baby Blade. This has still been my everyday go-to. Brows are done, now let's get into the eyeshadow products. And I have a couple here that have been in my rotation. They are all just very neutral, everyday luxury basics. That's what this video is all about. And the first things that I have here are the new Victoria Beckham Eyewear Eyeshadow Stick. She came out with three new ones for spring. Already reviewed them all, and I definitely have been enjoying these ever since I got them. The shade that I wear the most is this one, which is called Ballet. It's just like a very soft, pretty pink with a little bit of gold shimmer. I love that touch of gold shimmer because it just adds a little bit more warmth to my face. I like something that's slightly more warm tone. I also have an oldie but a goodie palette here that I pulled into the rotation. This is from Viseart and this is the Viseart Solstice palette. Gotta be one of my favorite neutral palettes ever. You have all the mattes that you need and all of the basic shimmers that you need. Isn't anything crazy? No, but you get that beautiful Viseart formula. And I also like that this is very travel friendly because you have the cardboard packaging. It's not too expensive. It's just an all around beautiful, beautiful palette. Kind of like grab and go, whack it on the face. Always looks good. I also really like this shade right here. This is like the one special shade in the palette. I'll swatch it for you. Do you see that? How how pretty is that? It's kind of like a pinky lilac shifty duo chrome. And when you layer that on top, just kind of like in the center of the lid, it looks so fresh, so beautiful and gives the look a little 
something something extra. I have two more palettes here, including the one that we're gonna be using today. I'm very excited, buckle up guys. The next one is this Tom Ford palette. Once again, like the most boring neutral palette ever, but it's so good. This one is called De La Creme. I showed this on, I think it was maybe like a fall holiday trends video that I did last year. This is such a beautiful basic palette. You have essentially two mattes, kind of like a shimmer, and then this one is more of a satin. And and these shadows are so smooth and blendable. Probably one of the best neutral Tom Ford palettes that you can get. I actually realized last night that they now sell this one at Sephora. So you can get this one in the Sephora sale. I would highly recommend this if you're looking for something neutral. And lastly, the palette that I'm going to be using today, the palette that nobody is talking about. I don't really know why. Maybe because it's a little bit hard to get. I will explain. I am going to be using the Chanel Le Beige palette in the shade deep. You guys know I'm on a mission to collect all of the palettes in this series. And I finally saw that this one came back in stock on the Chanel US website. So if you're interested, please go snag it now because it's very hard to find on other sites. I feel like everybody is selling the picky tone ones, like the warm and the cool. Those are easy to find. But for some reason, this one is a little bit harder to snag. And I don't know why, guys, because I think it is such a beautiful palette. I'll show you guys some close-ups and some swatches. You have some really gorgeous, neutral, maybe neutral to cool tone, neutral colors. And then you have these pops of shimmering gold if you want to dress it up a little bit. I know that this is called the deep palette, but I feel like you can do a lighter look with it. It doesn't have to be like a smoky look. I think it's a really beautiful everyday palette. And I wanted to show you guys, I was taking a look at this last night as I was preparing for this video and I thought, don't you think that this is kind of like the golden sister palette to the Eclat de Nuit, this one that sold out so, so so quickly. This one is definitely more grazy and a little bit more silvery, but I kind of feel like these, I don't know, more taupey, mushroomy types of neutrals you can also find in this palette. So enough of all my chatting, <laughs> let's dive into this palette. Usually with these palettes, I like to go in first with the long shade along the top because it's usually the lightest one in the palette and always has a really beautiful sheen. I usually will go in with this just to kind of like prime the eye, but also, I mean, this is such a beautiful one and done shade. Pretty much all the time, that shade in these palettes is a really good silky one and done shade. And see what I mean? I don't think it's that deep. It's called deep, but I don't know. I feel like most of the Le Beige palettes, you can lighten them up or deepen them up with no problem. I will also take that color and just put a little bit along the lower lash line. By the way, I'm filming this in natural light and the sun has kind of been coming out a little bit over the past couple of products. So if it seems like I'm squinting, it's just because it is quite bright now in the afternoon. Next, I'm gonna go into this slightly deeper taupey shade, and I'm gonna use this a little bit more on like the outer half of the eye. How cool is this brush? This is the Wayne Goss E3. See, it has this little fluffy pencil design. I love his new brushes. I love the way that they mixed these like cooler neutrals with the warm golds in the palette because you just get such a beautiful contrast. I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself here. Just wait, okay, just wait till we get to the golds. I have not featured this palette on my channel. I don't even think I've worn this while filming. I just have been using it in like my free time and on the weekends. There are two gold shades in this palette. One of them is more of like a topper, this one, and then this one is more of an actual shade that has kind of a, a base of pigment. So I'm gonna go into that one. So I just kind of like to layer the golds on top of the neutrals. Oh, it's so pretty. Like I said, you get this like gorgeous contrast. And I actually think I'm gonna put a little bit of that in the inner corner as well. I'm gonna use the little applicator and go into the deepest shade here because I'm gonna use this kind of like at the lash line as a bit of a liner. Ooh, as you can see, it's definitely pigmented. Maybe that's why they call this one deep because they actually have like a pig <laughs> pigmented neutral. But I really like the mix of this shade, which is slightly purpley in tone with the gold, with the cool tone neutrals. Like overall, it's just a very, very sophisticated palette. And you can kind of see here, if you skip this deeper shade, you get a much lighter, softer type of look. So you don't have to do this, but I'm just kind of giving you guys 
options and I want to use all the shades in this palette. Lastly, I'm going to go into the topper shade, which is the other gold one. This one I usually use sparingly because it is rather glittery, but I feel like it adds a nice little touch when just kind of layered on top. You can kind of see the difference there. Gold, no gold, gold, no gold. By the way, if you really like these tones, these colors on the eyes, I highly recommend you check out these two new eyeliners that Chanel came out with. We have Beige Lumiere and Brun Platine. These are some of the prettiest, softest eyeliners that Chanel has launched in a while. You can kind of see the colors are very similar. I think these are maybe a little bit light for the look that I created today, but I just wanted to mention I've been really enjoying these as well. Given that I use the eyeshadow as a liner, I think I'm going to skip more eyeliner today and just move on to mascara. I was looking at the last Everyday Makeup video that I did, and I actually ended up having the same mascara favorite as I do in this one, and it is the Tower 28 mascara, specifically in the new brown shade, which is called Drift. I love this for every day. Like brown mascaras, they're just a little bit softer. And here we are, friends. Here is the final eye look using the Chanel deep palette. I don't know why anybody isn't talking about this. I think it is so pretty. I absolutely love it. I'm obsessed with it. It's like one of my new favorites. So snag it if you can find it because it's a little bit hard to find. I'm going to finish up this look before we go into the lips with a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray. Ooh, that one has been good, especially for travel. I have this little mini one from the Sephora birthday gift this year. All right, friends, let's finish this look up. I'm taking the hair out. We're gonna get into the lips and then I'm gonna finish things out with a fragrance favorite for my everyday routine. Getting into lips right here, I have this trio that I have just kind of been going in between. All three of these lipsticks are featured in my recent lipstick rankings. So if you wanna hear my thoughts on which are best and which ones are worth the money, definitely Definitely check that out. I'll link it down below. But these are the three shades specifically that I feel I just kind of keep going to. They're very wearable. First up, I have one of the Tom Ford Slim lipsticks. These are very expensive. Not a very good value, but I do really like this shade. And hey friends, okay, I already spent the $50, so I'm gonna use it. This shade is called Rose Corset. It's just a really beautiful everyday rose. And I like that it's a little bit warmer as well. It's kind of like a my lips, but better. My lips but rosier type of hydrating lipstick. I also have right here the Makeup by Mario Super Satin Lipstick in the shade Dumbo. This is described as a spiced rose on the Sephora website and I definitely would agree with that. It's a little bit more muted. It comes across more deeper on the lips than the Tom Ford one. And then finally guys, this is the one that I've been wearing the most. This is the Merit Matte Lipstick and this is in the shade Antibes and this is gonna be more of a lighter, more subtle, everyday nude. I actually wore this one in my last Get Ready With Me. I'm trying to decide which one goes best with this look and I do actually think it is the Merit. So this is what I'm gonna be applying today. But you guys can check out that ranking if you wanna see more shades in these formulas. And as promised, friends, I'm gonna finish things up with a fragrance favorite in my everyday routine. And I've been going back to what is one of my most favorite fragrances probably ever. This is from Tom Ford. You guys know I'm a Tom Ford fragrance girl. If you're going to ask me which one would I keep if I had to get rid of all of them, it would definitely be Soleil Neige Eau de Parfum. I love this as just like a beautiful transitional scent from winter into the spring and summer. It's one of my few fragrances where I really feel like I can wear it all year round. And that's because it is a beautiful collision of fresh, light citrus notes, some of those more like Mediterranean citrus fruits like bergamot with all of the beautiful floral, you know, more sensual, sexy white floral notes like jasmine that I also really, really like that I typically like in more of my fall and winter scents, but they'll be mixed with, you know, more of like vanilla and spice and that kind of stuff. I love this because you kind of get the best of both worlds and the result is something so beautiful, so lovely and so perfect for year round. I absolutely love it. And so this is what I've been using lately. I know I sound like a broken record because whenever I recommend fragrances, I always have to talk about this one. And let me know if you like it. I would really like to know what you think. All right, friends. So this is the final look. I have my makeup, I have my fragrance, I have my earrings. I'm feeling great. Comment down below. Let me know what you think of my current everyday luxury favorites. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos 
videos just like this. And thank you once again to Ideal for partnering with me on part of this video. Don't forget, guys, you can use code Sophia Sees Beauty 10 to save 10% off the entire site. And I will have all of the styles that I showed you in today's video linked in the description box as well. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day, and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.